Hello, hello. Hello. Here's a little short poem I wrote in grad school. Um, it's called Canker. The wound would not heal for days, but that was nothing compared to my mother who ran her mouth all over my body. What people will do to be remembered. Tonight, my roses bloom beside her bed, working their thorns into her lips, the words I never knew how to say. Mother, nothing heals completely as long as I stay alive. And when I first brought that poem uh, into a workshop, a friend of mine afterward, a straight friend, Stuart, um, said, dude, you're sitting on a volcano. And he asked me if I had ever read The Little Prince by San Exbury, and I actually had not. And he said, oh, you, you've got to get a hold of that right away because um, it's one of the great male initiation handbooks. And then he read me a little bit from the ninth chapter. Um, on the morning of his departure, he put his planet in perfect order. He carefully cleaned out his active volcanoes. He possessed two active volcanoes, and they were very convenient for heating his breakfast in the morning. He also had one volcano that was extinct. But, as he said, one never knows. So he cleaned out the extinct volcano, too. If they are well cleaned out, volcanoes burn slowly and steadily without any eruption. Volcanic eruptions are like fires in a chimney. On our Earth, we are obviously much too small to clean out our volcanoes. That is why they bring no end of trouble upon us. And Stuart made t-shirts for us that had the little prince and cleaning out his active volcano. And so I locked myself uh, in my room for three days over a weekend, and I decided to explore this poem a little bit more. I gave myself permission to not write in lines, just to write in sentences and prose. And when I emerged, um, this is the poem that I showed my friend, Canker. The wound would not heal for days, but that was nothing compared to my mother who ran her mouth all over my body. What people will do to be remembered. The nurses cutting roses from the cards I sent have put them in a tub of scalding water, the kisses have come undone. Stamps are all she can save now, arranging them in a book, like all the photographs she could never take. I have managed to piece together the pages she tore away from me, though the box of letters burned the ashes were not entirely extinguished. The day after Christmas break, my father was driving me back to school, the two-lane highway on fire, everything falling. To me, their divorce was never final, only a precarious extension, a bridge I had learned to walk between two cliffs. And of course, we had a great distance to go, taking our turns at the wheel. My father never had a steady foot, only a start-stop rhythm that burned more gas than I thought we would have before reaching the next station. But we would make it. It was belief that kept us at each other's throats. I remember blood on the dining room floor and a few drops down his cheek when I broke a chair over his back. It wasn't damaged beyond repair, but it was put away in the attic. And I thought, if only mother knew. 
the county had already locked her up for the first time that year. Her neighbors had complained about sacks of garbage she threw from her balcony into the swimming pool below. I still can hear her voice that day in junior high when I was called out of class. She said to me in the back seat, love me, let me die. Her head bobbing in my lap, floating in its pool of chemicals. The woman who couldn't get in to clean drove us to the emergency room. Let me die. That's all I heard when I broke into her bedroom, the pills scattered on the floor like a broken necklace. She lived. That night there was a canker in the back of my throat. I couldn't eat for days. My father opened cans of a protein drink he brought home from the hospital. Drink this. Now sleep. Good. That was the first time I remember being held. I told my father at the end of our trip, I told him about the men who came into my life, the pain that made me feel alive. My father wept as we swerved to the side of the road. Then he began to speak, stoking a bed of ashes that years could not put out. Your aunt wrote me while you had stayed with them, still a baby. You'd scream if your mother came into the room where you were being bathed. Her sister told her not to touch you, but she did. I wanted this to stop. Why couldn't anyone stop her? There are no photographs of you then. She wouldn't have them in the house reminding her. My mother entered me with a kiss. At Easter break, I flew on a half-empty plane into the eye of night. I didn't bring her flowers, though I thought of how they would look on a grave. I wanted her in the earth, her ashes contained, not floating down a river of fire, not knowing the words she said to me that night would burn. Your father lies. Please, God, don't hurt your mother. You were always too difficult. Crying, crying, crying. I couldn't shut you up. You didn't want my milk, only your father. How could I live with myself? After we cried, I put out the light. I left her in that room, and I closed the door behind me. Tonight, my roses bloom beside her bed, working their thorns into her lips, the words I never knew how to say. Mother, nothing heals completely as long as I stay alive. <laughs>